for tuning into the channel. Back in February 22, I bought this Halcyon Grey Classic 350 Reborn. Now, I've been pretty happy with the bike, but it had one slight problem. On the first couple of days of riding it, I'd noticed I had a speedo issue, and the speedo was having a swing around, jamming on 30 kilometres an hour, and it was really annoying when I got out along the road. So I put up with that for a fair while, and you know, like uh, in the end, discovered that the only way I could fix that would be turn the ignition off, say if it was jammed on 30, because it was always 30 k's ahead. And for some reason, I found that I don't think it ran as well when it was showing that fault compared to what it normally runs when it's not showing that fault in the speedo. But that's only my personal opinion there, and it might be right, might be wrong, so it doesn't really matter. But as far as things go, I did find in the early stages, this is back in February 22, that uh, a couple of times I was out 50, 80, 100 kilometres away. What would happen, I'd ride out there and everything would be all right. And then when I um, get back on the bike, maybe the second or the third time, all of a sudden the speedo would jam when I took off or I'd be going along the road and all of a sudden it'd go haywire and then run all over the place. So what I'd do then was I'd pull over and I did find that in the early stages from the personal experience side was once you got there, turned the ignition on, turned it off, uh, in most cases it dropped two or three kilometres or maybe five kilometres and probably half around about eight or ten recycles it would eventually get back to zero. Now. Most of my problems with this speedo occurred not from the very start, from a cold start, but it always started after I'd ridden the bike, uh, yeah, like I said, 30 kilometres, 50 kilometres, pulled over and then I struck the problem there. So that was all right. I contacted Royal Enfield and told them about the problem and, uh, you know, I found the bike was a bit useless to ride with the speedo it was showing 30 k's over. They got back to me and they wanted to see photos of it, so these photos I'm showing you now, the exact photos I sent to Royal Enfield about it, and they got back to me and said there'll be a speedo replacement on the way for you. So I was the first person to complain about the speedo and there was no spare parts. So they said it'd take a few weeks for it to um, come in. So. Uh, I didn't really want to ride the bike with a monkey speedo because it was highly annoying. So in the meantime, I got onto a camber deal over there and I bought this bike as a substitute just to ride around while the speedo was fixed on the other one. So I was pretty happy overall with the purchase of this because Marsh Grey is not a bad bike. So between buying that bike and actually being contacted again by Royal Enfield that the speedo would arrive for this bike, I think something like 10 weeks went past would be a good 10 weeks. So uh, the speedo had actually, last time I tested it and sent them the info on it, I think it had jammed on, I think 1750, something like that, but I'll get, I'll pull that clip up and we'll have a look. So while waiting for Royal Enfield to produce the goods and send me a new speedo, I thought I'd do a bit of experimenting myself and by that I decided to, uh, like if I look back 2019, I had an interceptor which had a problem starting and I also had a problem with a B5 and a trials which had issues starting and their problems were related to um, a relay system in all three bikes and what it turned out to be or a fair bit of it involved was just too much grease in the relays and that was causing issues there. Now I was thinking to myself, well I might I might just go into the headlight of this, headlight housing of this Halcyon Blue, or grey I should say, and I might just pull the connector out, so I'll sort of move things on a little bit for you. So I'll pull the headlight out of this, now if you haven't pulled the headlight out of one of these, pretty easy, over here on this grey, you've got one screw there, one screw down there, and apart from that, just rip it straight out, give it a twist and pull it out. So here's what we're up to. So if you look into here now, and I've just pulled the headlight, look at the grease still in that one there. First I got myself a microfiber cloth, and I've put it all, or I tucked it all up here nice and tight, like so. Look at that, even got you the blue one. Okay guys, what we've done here, we've got a microfiber cloth in there, 
We've got our plug up the top here, like so. You've got a red tab there to undo it. So you press that in and just pull the plug out. Now what I found is that mine, it also had a fair bit of grease inside the terminal. Yeah, so when I'd been playing around with my computers, I'd been uh, spraying some of the connectors with this stuff here, and it's called CRC, Automated the Electrical Cleaner. Not real cheap, it's around about $25, $27 a can. So I decided I had nothing to lose. I might just get there, spray both contacts, like the, the one end of the Speedo, and the housing itself are in the harness. After I pull the harness, give it a really good hit up inside the actual housing of the Speedo itself and the connector plug itself. So I really, that, that was the idea of the microfiber cloth to make sure none of the uh, residue from the spray went down and went through all my wiring. And uh, that's why, I, and I give it a really heavy application too. And then after that, I allowed something like, um, I don't know, an hour or so to it totally dry and then come back and then put it all back together. Yeah, so it started the rain now, so that's not good, but we'll have a look here. Here's the underside of the speedo housing, so if you look at the pin connectors in there, that'd be the area where you'd get that spray and give it a really thorough squirt in there, plus on the harness itself. So once again in the harness side, I'm not going to pull it out of the bike just so I don't want to disturb it. I had a lot of problems in that area. So uh, the idea would be to the harness itself, pull it back out into the clear underneath that housing of the nacelle and then give it a really, really good squirt of stuff because I did, it was actually dripping out of it everywhere. So if you do that sort of thing, and this one here, uh, it, you've got nothing to lose but try. Now here's a video coming up where I'm out along the road there trying to get the bike re-zeroed again because I'm just about coming into town and I wanted it uh, showing the correct speed because there are speed, mobile speed cameras around as stationary speed cameras. So you have to be a little bit careful here where you're riding and you want your speedo working right. Yeah, so overall I was pretty happy with the picks I did on the thing and it worked pretty well for me, so it may also work for you. I won't guarantee it, but the fact is it did work for me. So when you look at it, this um, marsh grey one it came in in the first batch and I had no trouble with the Speedo, absolutely none at all on this bike. And I think I've clocked now 938 kilometres. So that's one where we will. Now, if you recall on the other one, this uh, Halcyon Grey, the Speedo caused issues at roughly up to 1,700 kilometres before I did the work on it. So if you look at it now, it's showing 45. So I've done roughly 3,000 and there's the replacement speedo which I haven't used yet. That was one I was just showing you there a while ago. So you've got that one there, the replacement, never used. You've got the, the one on the bike there. And you've also got this one here, never touched. Yeah, so when you look at it now, I've done roughly 3,000 kilometres since I hit this Halcyon Grey with the automotive electrical cleaner and had no problems with it since. So there's been no reason for me to go and fit the new one to it, because I reckon I'm just wasting my time doing it. And, you know, so far this electrical cleaner into the terminal has really done the job where before, I don't know how many times it stopped me, but quite a lot of times, and it was fairly frustrating out along the road there, swearing and carrying on because you don't know how fast you're going. The speed is jammed, you've got to come into town and such and such. So overall, the uh, idea worked well for me. Uh, I think, like I said, cost around $25 for a can of that stuff. You've got nothing to lose if you're waiting for one to come in and there's uh, a, a fair delay on the speedo. You've got nothing to lose if you buy a can of that stuff and spray it. But I see no reason why it wouldn't work for you when I had a huge amount of problems with that speedo on the healthy and grey, causing the issues everywhere I went. Then give it that one really good spray. Make sure when I put the connector back in, I seeded it in and it clips correctly and it might work for you so you know you've got nothing 25 bucks to try out and you might actually get it working like I did in mine and you also got a spare one then after that when they replace it for you it just in case you ever need to do it a you know put another one in later on if it doesn't work for you well at least you tried and 
that, you know, like I'm really happy and that's why there's no reason why I've gone in now and replaced it because it's working fine for me. So and I've had no trouble now on 3000 k But apart from that, if you like what I put together for you, you know, you'd like to give it a thumbs up, please do. If you want to subscribe to the channel on the Zen Wheel, that'd be another one too. So once again, thanks for tuning in, taking a look and hopefully you can hear this all right because I am doing the, bar, uh, the last part of this video in rain. So uh, it's fairly loud above the veranda here, and, uh, but I just wanted to finish this off and get it under control. So cheers for now, catch you later.